This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to simplify radical expressions, and our expressions will involve complex numbers. In our first section, we're going to review square roots. In our second section, we're going to go over easy problems. And then in our third section, we'll, we'll go over intermediate problems. And then in our last section, we'll go over difficult level problems. Let's get started. So let's review what square roots are and how they behave. So this is the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is 4. How do I know that's true? I could check it. I could square because squaring and square root are opposite functions. 4 squared means 4 times 4, which is 16. So yep, that 4 has to be the right answer. Let's try another one. Let's try the square root of 81. Well, the square root of 81 is 9. Why is that? That's because 9 squared, or 9 times 9, is 81. All right, well, there is a problem with taking square roots. Eventually, we're going to try to take the square root of negative 1. You know, a lot of people think the answer is negative 1 because they think, oh, negative 1 times 1. Well, now you got to square it. You'd have to take negative 1 squared, which is negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. So this is not true, right? This does not work. Okay, so what do you do in the case that it doesn't work? Well, mathematicians have run, run into this case before. They say the answer is I. Okay, so in other words, they make up a letter to describe this. They say that I is something called an imaginary number, and we're going to assign I every time we see the square root of negative 1. All right, let's keep that in mind when we work on the next three sections. All right, we're going to go over some easy problems. So let's say we take, for our first problem here, let's try the square root of negative 9. Okay, what's the square root of negative 9? Well, it is, well, let's say the square root of 9 is 3, but because we've got this negative, that's really um, the way we would look at this problem. We really look at this as negative 1 times 9, all underneath the radical sign. So the square root of 9 is 3, and then the square root of negative 1 is i. And there you go. How do I know that works? Well, I, ha I would have to actually take 3i and square it. So if I take 3i times 3i, I get 9i squared. Now you're asking yourself, what is i squared? Well, if i is the square root of negative 1, if you square both sides, right? so if I square both sides of this equation, you can clearly see on the right side that the square and square root are going to cancel you're left with negative 1. So anytime I see a i squared, I automatically know that that's negative 1. So when I take 9 times negative 1, I get negative 9. And yep, that's what I had underneath the radical to begin with. So therefore, that answer right there has to be the correct answer. All right, let's try that again with another, another problem. Uh, let's try the square root of negative 25. OK. Well, let's get into the details. This is really negative 1 times 25. And what's the square root of negative 1? The square root of negative 1 is i. The square root of 25 is 5. So your answer is really 5i. All right, let's get to intermediate level problems. So we're going to take a look at two intermediate level problems. Here's our first. Let's take negative 12 p squared, and we're going to take the square root of this. All right, well, there is no nice square root to this. I mean, you just can't take the square root of this whole thing. It's not a perfect square like 25 was, like 9 was, like 81 and 16 like we saw earlier. So what are we left to do? What are we, we're going to do is take the negative 12 and make something called a factor tree, and we're going to break it up. Well, first of all, we know that the negative... Right? I know this negative is an i. So I'm not even going to deal with the negative. I'm just going to take the 12. I'm going to break that down. So 3 times 4 is 12. When you find a number that can't be broken down, it's called prime. Circle it. 
4 is 2 times 2, and again, those are prime numbers. So what do I have underneath the radical? I've got 2, 2, 3. And p squared is really p times p. Okay, so how do I take the square root of this? In other words, how do I simplify it? Well, I'm going to take it in pieces. Okay, that's I know that's i. The square root of negative 1 is i. I can deal with that. I know that 2 times 2 is 4, so I could take the square root of that. And I know that p times p is p squared, and I could take the square root of that. The square root of p squared is p. Okay, well, let's write this down. The square root of negative 1, that's i. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of p squared is p. So what's left underneath the square root? Underneath the square root, we could see that there's still a 3 that we can't do anything with. So what do we do with all this material here on the outside? We have to multiply it all together. So we're going to multiply all this material here on the outside. So on the outside, we're going to get 2iP or 2pi. It doesn't matter what order you write those letters. Okay, so let's take a look at another quick example. Well, they're really not that quick because you have to break these things up with a factor tree. Well, as you get better at this, it's easier to break up. Now, I'm not going to show what the factor tree is for negative 100, but if you do it, you're going to get negative 1, 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. And x cubed is x, x, x. And we've got y, 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 y. Six y's. All of this is underneath the radical sign. So let's take the square root. So let's we could take the square root of negative 1. That's i. We could take the square root of 4. That's 2. We could take the square root of 25. That's 5. We could take the square root of x squared. So in other words, notice how I'm circling pairs because I can take the square root of a pair, a product pair. Okay, so the square root of negative 1 we said is i. That's that. Okay, square root of 4, or, yep, square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5, I'm sorry, square root of 25 is 5. And the square root of x squared is x. The square root of y squared is y. The square root of y squared is y. And another square root of y squared is y. So what's left underneath the radical? It looks like I've got an x, and that's it. So my final answer is going to be 10 i x y cubed y times y times y is y cubed square root of x and there you got your answer okay let's get to some difficult level problems all right for this last two examples i'm going to show you what it's like to multiply radical expressions so let's say we're multiplying radical expressions well it turns out that uh, we're going to simplify each one. This is one way to do this. Of course, I'm going to simplify. So this one right here, this negative 5, is negative 1 times 5. And what's 20? If you use a factor tree, it's 4 times 5. So there you go. There's 4. 2 times 2 times 5. All right, so let's clean this up. Let's uh, take the square root of negative 1. We can take the square root of 4. Okay, so what do we get? Here I'm going to get i times the square root of 5, because I can't do this. the 5. 5 stays underneath the square root. Okay, what do I get here? Well, square root of 4 is 2. The 5 stays underneath the radical. Okay, when I multiply these two radical expressions, I multiply the outside material times the outside, and I multiply the inside material times the inside. Oh, so when it turns out, when I multiply these, I get another pair inside the radical. So what do I get? Well, square root of 25 is 5. There's nothing left in the radical. So it looks like the 2i is on the outside with the 5. So we're going to multiply those pieces together and get a final answer of 10i. 
Okay, let's try one more example. Now this next one I'm going to make a little bit more difficult. I'm going to need some more room, so that's why I'm going a little bit higher here. But negative 18x cubed, it's all being multiplied by the square root. Now that's all underneath the square root too. And it's going to be multiplied by negative 30 uh, x to the fourth. Okay, so let's say we multiply all this together. Well, first thing I'd like to do is simplify this. So what's the negative 18? Well, that's going to be 9 times 2. And 9 is 3 times 3. Oops, I forgot the i. In other words, the negative 1 there in front. Okay, so anyway, it says 2 times 9. And we've got x cubed. Okay, and all that is being multiplied by negative 1 times 30, that's 2 times 15, and 15 is 3 times 5, x to the fourth. Again, all this is underneath the radical. So what do we do? We start pairing things up. So we look for pairs. Why? Because it's square root. If it was cube root, we would be circling things in triplicate, but that's a whole other story. Okay, square root you take things in pairs. Okay, so let's take the square root of negative 1. That's i. Let's take the square root of 9. That's 3. Let's take the square root of x squared. That's x. What's left underneath the radical is 2x. Okay, let's try it over here. Well, let's, oops, no square root sign yet. Square root of negative 1 is i. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of another x squared is x. What's left underneath the radical is 2, 3, and 5, which I could do nothing with. All right, now before I multiply um, and actually clean it up, I don't want to clean up yet. Uh, I know that this is 3xi. Okay, really that's what this is. This is 3xi radical 2x times, of course, this is i x squared. Doesn't matter what order I put the letters. Now I'm going to leave this 2 times 3 times 5. Now the reason I'm leaving that is because when I multiply this, I take the outside times the outside, so that's 3xi times this, so that would be 3x cubed, right? x times x squared is x cubed. i times i is i squared. Okay, what's underneath the radical? I've got a x and a 2 and a 2, 3, 5. Okay, so that means I could take some more things out. I could take out a square root there. Okay, so it turns out I could do a little bit more. So that means a 2 goes on the outside. I'm going to need some space here. So Okay, so a 2, square root of 4 is 2. And what's left inside is a x times 3 times 5. All right, if we do a little bit of last minute cleanup, um, oh, that was an i squared. Sorry about that, that was an i squared right there. Okay, so what's left? This is going to be 6 times x cubed times i squared. Let's keep in mind that i squared is really negative 1. I squared is negative 1. Okay, so that's really 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Forget about my x cubed. Okay, so what's left inside the square root? 15x. And there you go. Got the final answer. All right, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out our lessons, our interactive quizzes, and instructional videos. Take care.